approach a child with fever of unknown origin? It has to be systemic evaluation. So, as once again emphasizing, first thing is that you have to document the fever and then take a focus history, do a physical examination and then do a first line investigation. This is a stepwise manner how do you go and there are so many clues you can get from the history, examination and first line investigation. Ask about fever, the duration, height and trend, what makes it lower? Usually paracetamol will result in lowering of fever. Typically in Kawasaki disease, paracetamol is not effective. Ask for history of travel, exposure to any wild animals or insects, mainly to look for any zoonosis, contact with sick people or high risk exposure, dietary habits and intake of new food, especially unpasteurized dairy products. These can result in salmonella infection, uncooked meat, presence of pica for a possible infection with toxocera and in adolescent ask about their sexual habit, piercing or tattooing and exposure to narcotic, so narcotic especially for hepatitis B and hepatitis C and also HIV. History of comorbidities, if there are any other recurrent episodes of infectious illness will point towards immunodeficiency, presence of medical devices, CV central venous catheter, any uh, stunt, any uh, and gastrotomy, any presence of specific symptoms ask about all of them. This is how a family history may help because you can get a family disease, family history in familial dysautonomia, brother and sister of the same age are affected in viral infection, ethnicity, Mediterranean fever, adopted children, we may have tuberculosis, HIV, hepatitis B or C could have been transmitted from before the adoption from other uh, settings. And then those who attend the daycare are more prone to have viral infections and uh, food habits are important. Personal history, those who consume unpasteurized milk, tuberculosis, brucella, listeria, E. coli, campylobacter infections are more common. Goat's milk consumption is typically associated with brucella and salmonella infection. Again, well water, salmonella, giardia and undercooked meat, toxoplasma and pica. We have already said toxocera canis. Absence of vaccination, invasive infections are more common and if the child is engaged or the adolescent engaging in sexual activity, always think of STD and pelvic diseases. History of piercing and taboos, once again HIV, hepatitis B, C or maybe infectious endocarditis. Ask about the past medical history, comorbidities, presence of diabetes, autoimmunity and nephrotic syndrome make a child uh, because these child may have associated immune deficiency and they can have more infection. Supports or devices and drugs, especially ask about the history of drug. Even antipyretics, anti-inflammatory drugs given for long period can cause paradoxically drug induced fever. History of travel, bathing in rivers and lakes, especially important for malaria, hepatitis and those diseases which can be transmitted by this mode, especially in the leptospirosis is very common when you have more of water collection. So, these diseases are more common there. Recent history of animal insect bite ticks against zoonosis including various rickettsial diseases, history of contact with tuberculosis, recurrent infections such as UTI, pharyngitis, skin infection, ask about them. Also ask about surgical intervention, uh, we have already talked about drugs anorexia, weight loss, whenever there is anorexia or weight loss or night sweats, typically think of some malignancy, the most common being the lymphoma and the other hematological malignancies. Severe weight loss again and thinness, again uh, various malignancies and also think of systemic weight loss or also think of systemic juvenile idiopathic arthritis. The next step is the physical examination thoroughly, evaluate each organ or system, repeat day by day. This is very important. Do not rely on your first day examination because up to 25 percent of signs appear after the first assessment. So, if you have child with you for almost a week after the child been hospitalized, so daily look for new signs to appear that will definitely give you a clue to any other disease that that might be there. They do not always remain fever without uh, any focus. 
or unknown origin, they have some telltale signs which you should be able to assess and there are some red flag signs which typically point to certain illnesses. These are weight loss, night sweat, itching and uh, severe weight loss, asthenia, thinness, pallor, pitiki and refusal to play. Beware of these red flag signs because these children will need more closer follow up and monitoring so that uh, they do not land up in complications. Relative bradycardia, a feature of typhoid fever, otherwise you have mainly tachycardia, lymphadenopathy if present may suggest malignancy, it may suggest a viral infection typically EV virus, adenovirus, HIV or some parasitic infection also uh, in collagen vascular diseases also and one of the important cause of uh, lymphadenopathy though not common is a Kikuchi disease. Again same about hepatomegaly, splenomegaly because all these are suggest a reticulo endothelial system involvement. So, causes of all of them are same. There are infections which infect endo reticulo endothelial system. There are malignancies which infect this system and there are collagen vascular diseases which again affect the reticulo endothelial system. So, causes of remain the same whether it is for hepatomegaly, splenomegaly or uh, lymphadenopathy several causes remain same. Presence of a palpable mass in the abdomen usually suggests some neoplasm or abdominal abscesses. Heart murmur, presence of a heart murmur again the most important cause is infective endocarditis and uh, atrial myxoma is another important disease which should be kept in mind if you find a heart murmur. Arrhythmia, presence of friction rubs, friction rub typically are characteristic of pericarditis, think of rheumatic fever, Lyme disease and myocardial diseases or infectious diseases of the once again pericardial effusion if the friction rub is present. Presence of musculoskeletal signs bone pain typically you can have in infections of the bone or uh, you can have arthralgia of arthritis in various collagen vascular disorders and also infections such as brucellosis. Uh, even hepatitis B can present with arthralgia or arthritis of the small joint. Myalgia can be there because of the poly pyomyositis, viral myositis, brucellosis and once again several vasculitis syndromes. And spinal pain again you can have in infections such as brucellosis, typhoid fever or they may be related to the local spondylodiscitis or discitis. Examine the skin very carefully. Presence of erythema nodosum, erythema migrans, malar rash typical in SLE, salmon rash typical of GIA, palpable purpura present in various vasculitis syndrome such as polyarthritis nodosa and seboric rash which is very characteristic of histiocytosis and bullous lesion or history of staph infection need to be looked into. Presence of clubbing would indicate a chronic pulmonary disease, a chronic GI disease or maybe in endocarditis or cystic fibrosis you can find digital clubbing. All these causes can present with pyrexia of unknown origin. Examine the oral cavity and pharynx carefully. Look for any pharyngeal hyperemia, any ulcers in the oral cavity, hypertrophy of the gums typically seen in leukemia and histiocytosis and epistaxis and dental pain or pharyngeal asymmetry which will point out towards the parapharyngeal abscess or Lemire syndrome. Face and neck, examine for any pain, swelling for mastoiditis or sinusitis, any meningism or neck signs for meningitis and any palpable mass in the face and neck basically to look for lymphadenopathy most importantly or in any separative thyroiditis. Eye is seen or is said to be a mirror of the body. So, fundus examination is a must in any child. You may unearth a miliary tuberculosis, choroiditis, you may unearth vasculitis or chorioretinitis to give you a clue about the disease the child may be having. Look for conjunctival hyperemia, dry eye, uveitis. Most of them are present in collagen vascular disorder. Retinal ischemia is a classical features of polyarthritis nodosa and opsoclonus, myoclonus typically seen in children having neuroblastoma.